Are you looking for the secret to losing weight? Have you been bouncing from diet to diet, doing everything out there that's the secret hack for fat loss? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just make those pounds disappear? There are hundreds of diets for fat loss, ranging from low carb, low fat, crash diets, detox diets, and let's not even get started on the fad diets. Today in the fitness world, coaches love to differentiate themselves. They love to go through their scroll and point out what they do right as compared to what this coach does wrong and why they're making you fat. But do you know what they all have in common? All successful diets? A calorie deficit. Do you know why? It's because it's the only way to lose weight. My name is Coach Jordan, and I'm here today to share with you how a calorie deficit really is the only way to lose weight. I put this video together to tell you what a calorie deficit is, my three-step method into getting and maintaining a successful calorie deficit, and the biggest mistakes people make in a calorie deficit. In today's world, Calorie deficit has unfortunately become almost common knowledge, a household term. But that doesn't mean that you totally understand what that is. So what is a calorie deficit? A calorie deficit is a shift in the calories in versus calories out relationship to favor calories out. There's an equation, sometimes identified or referred to as CECO, calories in, calories out. The two dictates what happens to your weight. If the calories in is greater than the calories out, your weight will increase. If calories in equals calories out, you'll relatively maintain your weight. And last, a calorie deficit, calories in is less than calories out, meaning you're burning more than you're taking in, meaning you will lose weight because of the calorie deficit. Simply put, a calorie deficit means you're eating fewer calories than you burn. Calories are a unit of energy. They can be taken from the food we take in or from the stores we have on our body. When your goal is to change your body composition, you're looking to change the storage of or the amount of energy stores along your body, aka body fat. A calorie deficit is created to allow you to complete your day-to-day -day activities got to keep up with everyday living, while also pulling from the stores on your body. Now, let's talk about how to get into a calorie deficit. With our Complete Performance clients, we have a three-step method for bringing someone into a calorie deficit, for promoting fat loss. There are so many different ways to create a calorie deficit, but there's one thing that's in common. This is the only way you can lose weight. So let's start with number one. Step number one is to identify your maintenance level calories. Maintenance level calories are the amount of calories you take in that matches your calories burned. So the calories in matches the calories burned to lead to a maintained weight. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually want to drop into your calorie deficit as soon as you're ready. It sounds tempting. You're excited to start losing weight. But there are a number of reasons why maintenance level calories is key to fat loss. The number one reason, it allows you to more accurately determine your caloric deficit. Think of it this way. Without identification of maintenance level calories, you're really doing a guess and check program. When you identify maintenance level calories, you can appropriately pull into that calorie deficit and be confident that this is the amount that's going to yield fat loss. Unfortunately, this isn't a number that can just be Googled or plugged into a website that tells you your maintenance level calories. It requires individual characteristics like height, sex, gender, activity level, weight. Then those characteristics are plugged into some pretty high level equations like the Harris-Benedict equation. Once you've identified maintenance level calories, you gradually work your way to that level. For the majority of our clientele, they're looking to increase their caloric intake up to maintenance level calories. 
we're adding 10 to 15% every seven to 14 days while monitoring the body's response via their weight. Once you've established maintenance level calories, you've primed your body for fat loss. It is ready to go. Want to know the three reasons you need to find maintenance level calories? Click the link below. Grab hold of Maintenance Calories 101. Step number two in finding our calorie deficit is start small. Once you've identified maintenance level calories, most are tempted to pull as fast as they can, slashing as many possible calories because the bigger the better, right? Not so fast. You're eager to shed the pounds. I get that. But creating too large of a deficit is a recipe for disaster. It leads to a rapid increase in hunger. Willpower can only take you so far. And when you're hangry, you're going to want some food. Number two, a slowed metabolism. We want this to be a rapid burning fire. The faster your metabolism, the better it is for fat loss and for health overall. Third, it's an unrealistic lifestyle. If you want to lose the weight and keep it off, the more calories you do this with, the better. Think of it this way. Starting small allows you to eat more calories while still losing weight. That's going to really set you up in a position to adhere to this deficit throughout your fat loss phase and to keep you healthy during and to keep you from feeling too restricted. So how small should you start? Well, 500 calories is the most renowned number when it comes to a calorie deficit because if you cut 500 calories from every day across the week, that'll be a 3,500 calorie deficit by the end of the week. If you don't know the significance of 3,500 calories, one pound is equivalent to 3,500 calories. So cut 500 calories a day, lose one pound per week. Sounds like a great plan because at the end of the year, many of us would be pretty happy if we lost one pound per week for the entire year. But that doesn't mean you have to eat 500 less calories. Oftentimes, a more mild deficit is a better way for individuals to start their fat loss journey. That more mild deficit ranges from about 200 to 300 calories. Now, how do you create that deficit? Well, there are three ways to create a calorie deficit. Number one, you decrease the calories that you take in. You eat less. Number two, you burn more calories, meaning you exercise more. Number three, you do a combination of both. You eat a little bit less, you exercise a little bit more. For our Complete Performance clients, we find that a zigzag strategy works best. We're gonna bump up activity, burn a few more calories, then we're going to eat a little bit less, pull a little bit further into the calorie deficit. We allow those two to operate together, and we'll bump up activity again. And we'll pull our calorie deficit again, altering back and forth until we work our way into a suitable deficit for the individual. It's important to know that the way to create a deficit is one that suits you long-term. It has to be compatible to your lifestyle. You are the one going about this journey. Step number three in creating a calorie deficit is stay consistent. If a calorie deficit is the secret to losing weight, then consistency is the secret to a calorie deficit. Hate to break it to you, but you're not going to lose weight as fast as you think, even if you go for a non-conservative approach. As soon as that scale stops moving, you're going to be really tempted to add more cardio, slash more calories, maybe both. But I'm begging you, stay consistent and as cheesy as it sounds, trust the process. We tell our Complete Performance clients that we'll make a change to our calorie deficit only after 10 to 14 days of consistent intake and a stagnation in their weight loss results. Just like you need to resist the urge to go from diet to diet, it's important that you give the calorie deficit its time to do its work. Allow it to work its magic. Now, Let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to their calorie deficit. Consistency is key, and that might be the biggest mistake people make, but it's not the only mistake. The first mistake, 
is not finding your maintenance level calories. It essentially leaves you into this guess and check equation. Now, I know you want to lose the weight this time and you want to keep it off. So why would you waste time guessing instead of ensuring you have the proper path? It's because of excitement and eagerness and motivation. Trust me, the pounds will come off and they'll stay off if you find your maintenance level calories. The second mistake is creating too big of a calorie deficit. Back to that go big or go home mentality, this is not the place for that. Again, tame that excitement, that eagerness, channel that motivation elsewhere and trust in a consistent caloric intake. Remember that larger deficits only lead to extreme hunger, big time cravings and low energy and extreme fatigue. The third mistake is staying in a calorie deficit for too long. Oftentimes individuals find their calorie deficit, one that helps them lose weight and they believe they have to stay there forever. You should never live in a calorie deficit. Most often a fat loss phase should be eight to 16 weeks max, depending on the individual and their lifestyle. I won't lie, calorie deficits are tricky and I wouldn't recommend going about this alone. If you're curious about where you should be at calorie wise, how can you create your calorie deficit? Click the link below to grab the calories 101 guide to start putting together your calorie deficit and seeing your fat loss results.